Hi Biology 150 students. In this video I'm going to show you how to make both tables and graphs from your catalase enzyme data for the catalase enzyme research paper that you'll have to do during the course. So uh, this is the data file that you will download from the Blackboard site. Once you open it up in Excel, you'll see that there are three pages. Uh, the first page has the raw data. The second page is where you'll be making your tables down here at the, the bottom. It's all pre-formatted for you and you'll just be adding in the numbers and um, doing a couple more things. And then the third page is where uh, you'll be making your figures and so this will collect some information from your tables and then um, it will facilitate uh, making your your figures. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. As you probably remember from class, uh, what we want to do is first get an average uh, for these numbers, which should be closer to the true value than any single measurement. And we want that average to be in our data table. And so we'll start with the Part B experiments, which were all about uh, temperature and the reaction rate of catalase at these various temperatures. Um, and then you'll also, on your own, after I show you, be able to do Part C analysis, which is about pH and the reaction rate of catalase at different pH levels. All right, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing to do is to select the box you want the average to go in and then you click on the function uh, button and you choose the function you want to calculate which this time is is average if you double click on average uh, it will ask you for which numbers you want to average I'm doing this on a Mac so it's going to look a little bit different than a PC but the uh, the process is essentially the same. So once you have uh, this, this little area up and it's asking you for the numbers you want to average, you scroll over to the raw data, you click, hold, and select all of the numbers you want to average. And so we're just going to average all of the measurements for all of the groups at four degrees Celsius. And then you can hit enter and your number will appear in the box. So this is this is the average for all of those time points. <clears throat> you can do the same thing for all of the other uh, temperatures or if you want to just speed things up if you go to the bottom corner of the first box your cursor will turn into this black plus sign um, and if you click hold and drag down it will fill in all of the boxes below doing the same function but for the data on the, the next row down. So anyways, that's a quicker way to do all of the average calculations and you can see that now we have um, average values for all of the various temperatures. Okay, so our second function is standard deviation and again you want to click in the box where you want the standard deviation number to go first and then um, you can go up to function if you click function this window um, should appear and then you're gonna pick standard deviation STDEV double click that and now it's asking you well what numbers do you want the standard deviation for and so we're gonna go back to our raw data we're looking at uh, the four degrees Celsius temperature uh, measurements and we're gonna click hold drag across and select all of those hit enter and there you go that's the standard deviation for these averages at four degrees Celsius uh, the next thing you'll do is either continue doing the same thing for all of the temperatures or like we did before go to the bottom right corner where you'll get that black plus sign click hold drag down and there you go that's the standard deviation values for um, all of your your temperature levels
All right, so average.